Apple's in a position right now where they could become the world's biggest mobile phone carrier, killing AT&T, Verizon, EE, whoever you're with, they could absolutely dominate. Apple is like a control freak. They want to lock everything down and make sure their ecosystem is controlled by them, owned by them. They control your phone. They control what goes on it. They control everything about it apart from your provider. They're now in a position where they can move into the telecom industry, become your provider as well, and absolutely dominate this industry. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking about how Apple could become the biggest cell phone provider, absolutely disrupting the industry just with a few changes to the iPhone. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's jump into it. The biggest selling point for Apple is their ecosystem. At the end of the day, this is what everyone compares when they're comparing their products to competitors. Telecom is the next logical step for Apple to add to the ecosystem. They can tightly integrate this and disrupt an over $2 trillion industry. Apple needs a change. iPhone sales have declined for the last five years. This isn't because iPhones are becoming less popular or Apple is becoming less popular. It's because they've succeeded. They've succeeded in saturating their own niche within the market. We can see this because there are over 900 million iPhones in use as of 2021, but every millennial, hipster, mum, upper middle class consumer already has an iPhone, so they can't sell them anymore. And this is why they need to change. They are moving over from a product-based business so selling iPhones and Macs, don't get me wrong, they're still gonna sell a lot of iPhones and MacBooks, but they need to move into more of a service-based business. We can see that Apple have already doubled down on services like this with Apple One, which bundles all the services together, like Apple Music, News Plus, Google, Apple, I keep saying Google, Apple Fitness Plus, Apple Arcade, iCloud Plus, and Apple TV Plus. These are services that they already offer, so you can see how they're already transitioning into this business model. And the next one could be the Apple SIM card. The problem with traditional phone carriers, as you probably already know, is they have no fixed prices. So the price can fluctuate and they can charge you more and more as you go on through your contract. Traditional carriers also like to charge you extra for features. So where you'd like to use 5G instead of 4G, or you'd like to use your phone abroad, or just the amount of stuff that you would like to use, they can already charge you more and more every time you want to add this on or use that feature. And the last problem with traditional carriers is the SIM card. So they're all physical SIM cards where you've got e-SIM cards now. So this will be a big selling point for Apple. So let's talk about the solution. What's the solution for Apple? and why will they succeed? Like how Apple used Intel chips in their Macs before they developed their own silicon, I will imagine that Apple will use carriers around the world to provide the infrastructure and then they will add their value with their services that they can bundle in to the package as a one-off monthly subscription. So as opposed to paying for your phone and then you pay for all of the services on top, you can pay for your phone and the network and your services all in one bundle and then it would come at a reduced rate. I imagine they would offer three services, a low, mid and high tier service. This will allow them to cover a broad audience of their market, which they're already very familiar with. First will be the low cost solution. I imagine this will have unlimited everything as will the other plans. So limited calls, texts and data. Then they'll bundle in a couple of services like for example, news and music. The medium cost service will provide everything in the tier below with some additional service and possible discounts for purchasing of iPhones, possibly on a monthly plan. The top tier service will give you all of the services that Apple provides with the unlimited data, calls and text and a new iPhone on a 24 month, say, rotor where you can upgrade your phone as you go through the contract. Often plans like this with every purchase of an iPhone will mean that the LTV or the lifetime value of a customer will increase with every purchase from Apple. Whereas you may only buy one or two iPhones, you'll then buy an iPhone maybe every two years and you'll pay monthly for services, calls, texts and data. This might not make sense for every customer, but we've already seen an increase of 25% to the services that Apple already provides. This has reached a new high now of 825 million. That's the best part of a billion people who are already paying for Apple services and would easily be transitioned over 
to the Apple SIM if it made sense for them. If Apple is in a position to bundle their services and offer the Apple SIM to existing customers, along with the services that they already provide, it will make a lot of sense for a lot of us to move over to this service. Quite frankly, that's stuff that carriers are already trying to implement and people like GiftGaff and new carriers into the industry are already offering low cost plans like this. Some of them include Netflix or Sky in the UK and other services in the Americas. So how will Apple disrupt the industry? We've already talked about the ecosystem and how they could tightly integrate the carrier features into the phone. This will give you better visibility, better features, and an overall better experience with your carrier if it's more tightly integrated into your phone. They could offer fixed prices so that prices are locked for 12 to 24 months, which gives people a lot more security when they are purchasing. Obviously, they are selling the phones, so they want you to take full advantage of all the features like 5G, unlimited data. They want you to use these phones as much as possible. So they will bundle all sorts of features into the packages so that they can get the most use out of your phone. Depending on how they structure it, they could do it completely flexibly. So you pay on a monthly, three monthly basis, which is a lot more fluid than traditional phone contracts. Moving over to the eSIM as opposed to a physical SIM card, will free up space in the iPhone, and we know this is very precious, so we may be able to add more features and let them be a bit more creative with the way that they make the iPhone. Lastly, they can bundle this all into one subscription, so it's nice and easy for the consumer, so you can pay for your phone and use all the features and services all in one monthly payment. So this could mean going from a traditional carrier to a very vertically integrated company where everything is feature rich and you pay one subscription for your phone and all of its services. Let me know your opinion. Do you think this is the way Apple will go? Do you think that they will move into telecom or most likely partner with another carrier? And how much do you think it'll cost? Do you think they'll have a tiered systems, tiered services? Or do you think it'll be more like a one-off, you pay for this and that's that? Let's discuss it below in the comments. And if you're looking for what to watch next, check out this video because YouTube knows you're going to love it. And I'll see you there. Peace.